Wet weather to start the 89th Le Mans 24 hours after two exploratory laps behind the safety car. The field released with the Toyota hybrids leading the charge up to the first corner. But late on the brakes in the wet weather conditions, Olivier Platt losing control of his Glickenhaus and turning around Toyota number eight of Sebastian Buemi as the Alpine moved into second place courtesy of a great start from Nico Lapierre. The race leader though, Mike Conway, heading through the spray in some very wet conditions. Conway being cautious, Lapierre in second place in the Alpine and Sebastian Buemi, the number eight team, the winner for the last three Le Mans, taking a hit in the very first green flag corner. And that could put their race right in the back burner. Debris all over the track from the front of the number 708 Glickenhaus. Trouble also for the pole sitter in GTE Pro, the hub auto car turned around on lap one. Conditions were absolutely treacherous. No wet running at all during the week meant everybody was learning as they went. Number eight Toyota had to stop and restart its electrical systems. Further time lost on lap one as the rest of the field streamed by. A record equaling 61 starters at the beginning of the race. Edexport lost one of their cars after a practice accident. Their second went off in the gravel early on. And then at Mulsanne Corner, the number eight Toyota was in trouble for a third time, tripping over the Team India LMP2 car. More time lost for Sebastian Buemi, the defending champion. Trouble though then came for the Alpine in wet weather conditions on the exit of the second part of Indianapolis. Nico Lapierre looping the car around and having to wait for a gap in traffic to rejoin. So eager to stay with the Toyota just a fraction too early on the throttle and the car snapped away from him. No damage other than time lost. LMP2 battles raged behind leader Antonio Felix da Costa, the Jota Sport car way out front, but G-Drive and WRT each with two cars in the hunt battling for third place with their lead entries in the fast improving conditions. Still slippery enough though to catch out the unwary and a three-way battle dominated GTE Pro, Corvette, Ferrari and Porsche all nose to tail at the head of the field. Two dramatic hours already completed, 22 more still to come. There was some great battling going on in LMP2 as Wayne Boyd tried to defend his category lead, Stoffel van Dorna hunting him down and then they discovered the traffic. The gaps opened up for Wayne Boyd, the gaps closed for the Belgian driver. That meant the lead stretch that Boyd had but also the gap came right down second and third as van Dorna was caught by Franco Colapinto and the two of them ran nose to tail up to the end of the lap. Wayne Boyd able to stretch that advantage within LMP2 as there was drama for Sam Bird in GTE Pro. Trying to put a lap on Brendan Arib's Ferrari. The two tangled coming down to the Ford chicane. Around they both went. Both rejoined. Both lost time. This was Brendan Arib's view turning into the chicane and contact as Sam Bird was already fully alongside. Then the rain started to fall and one of the first casualties was Fritz van Eerd. He was off the road at the Porsche curves. He turned in, suddenly the car got away from him as the grip level changed. And although the car was undamaged, he was well beached in the gravel and lost a lot of time as the car was retrieved. But yet more drama within LMP2 and there was more drama around the corner as well. Sophia Flersch, minding her own business, suddenly came under attack from an out of control Franco Colapinto. Both cars ending up in the barrier and that seemed to destroy the steering on Sophia Flersch's car. It spun back across the road and she tried to get it out of the way. The trouble was the steering by this stage wasn't working at all and the car trickled back into the path of Tom Chloe who had nowhere to go. Two more damaged cars, cue the safety car with the rain falling with damaged cars and debris all over the circuit. Sophia Flourish did her best to get the car moving again, but to no avail, and it was another big impact. And United Autosports was in strife as well, as Manuel Maldonado careered across the gravel and Harpoon teammate Paul Deresta. Two more front-running LMP2 cars in trouble, both badly delayed, as the British team found itself tumbling down the order. 
Maldonado's car off into the gravel. It lost a huge amount of time. And there was yet more problems as well as for the IDEX 1448 had a spin coming into the chicane. Again, an LMP2 car losing chunks of time. And so we had the safety car out on track. The rain continued to fall, even if it was only light rain. The marshals had quite a lot of clearing up to be done. And at the head of the field, the two Toyotas continued to dominate the race. Lunchtime at Le Mans, heading into the final four hours of the 89th running of the world's greatest endurance motor race. What looks like a regulation pit stop for Racing Team Netherlands, but it could have been so much worse. Gerda van der Garde getting away with this lurid moment on the grass in the S's that could have easily spelt the end of their race. Tired cars, tired tyres, tired drivers. Lots more drama still in store with four hours, two full Grand Prix lengths and more left to race. Everybody needs to keep their calm if they want to make it to the chequered flag. In the battle for the lead of the race, all five hypercars that started still continue while the other classes have been decimated by incident and accident. But the hypercars aren't without their dramas. Race leader Mike Conway almost missing the pit entry road. Both Toyotas are struggling with a fueling issue. They can't go as far as they should do on fuel because the car is not picking up all the fuel in the tank. At the moment, Toyota are managing the situation but will they make it to the end? Five, four, three, two, one. We are under full course yellow. We are under full course yellow. Race director bringing the race under control. The car's at a maximum of 80 kilometers an hour, 50 miles an hour, while marshals all the way around the 13.6 kilometer track. Tidy up debris to try and keep it as safe as possible. And it's that debris that often leads to incidents, to punctures and to mistakes. Le Mans continues into the afternoon. The four o'clock finish can't come soon enough for some. It might not give enough racing time for others. Toyota look on target to win for the first time ever in the new hypercar class. The number eight car chasing number seven as they battle each other for victory. Any mistake right now from our surviving cars could easily spell the end of their race. The number eight car in second place got away with this little error, but there was worse dramas in store for Rinaldi's Ferrari in the GTE AM class. A heavy impact with the barriers would set them back on the road to the pits and with a big question mark over their continued performance in the race again bringing them back under control to clear up the debris. The race director and marshals continue to work hard at Le Mans. Drama in the closing stages of the 2020 Le Mans 24 hours in fourth place in GTE Pro, the 91 Porsche running across the chicane and ripping the floor out of the car. Black orange flag car 91. Black orange flag car 91. They had hoped to continue, but with the debris that the car was shedding, the race director forced them to come back to the pits for repairs. Their challenge for a podium finish in this year's race was over. Track picking up debris. 
Marshals cleared up the debris under the cover of yellow caution flags and we went back to green flag racing for the final few minutes. Last pit stop for Toyota. Both cars suffering from vibrations and not picking up all the fuel from their tank. So the last few hours were nervous times. These brand new cars dominating the race in the first of the hypercar era Le Mans 24 hours. An all new car for Toyota but they were looking for a one-two finish and were taking no chances at all. Their closest rivals, Alpine, were a couple of laps adrift, and as the Toyotas set off for the final few minutes, victory looked assured. But Toyota, above all other teams, know that nothing is over until the chequered flag, and the ill luck that had hit them a few years beforehand Losing the race on the final lap was to strike again. Another red, white and black car, not a Toyota, but the LMP2 leader from rookie team WRT. They had been looking at a 1-2 result. Unbelievably, on the final lap, their lead car stopped, its engine dead. Grief for driver Yiffa Ye and his two teammates, disbelief for the team, but their other car was still leading in a tight battle for victory in the class by just a couple of seconds. As the Toyotas came to the line, line astern for the perfect team formation photo. In the background, the LMP2 battle carved its way through slow moving traffic, WRT taking it by a couple of car lengths. Le Mans is rich with drama and tragedy. The number seven Toyota, three times beaten by their sister car, finally claimed victory. And WRT with an LMP2 win and heartbreak in the same garage. Alpine claimed third place overall with all five of the new hypercars making it to the finish. But the new hypercar era dawns with a 1-2 for Toyota, the winners at Le Mans.